all rise. Yeah, that's right. You're going to think so once I show you what I got going on. I got something so cool that I shouldn't even let you see it. Is it this K? Model K150 from the 1950s with original electronic scrap apparatus and pickup and everything except part of the binding? No, it's not that. Because I can't properly show you all the scrap apparatus on this guitar using my current methodology and etiology to show off a guitar. So I'm going to fix that today with one of the coolest projects I think that you're never going to see anywhere else but here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a thick piece of square wood about a foot thick deep, excuse me. We're going to take a round piece of wood about 18 inches in diameter. We are going to take a swivel base from a chair. I don't want to know. I cannot absolve you of your sins. Just get one. And plenty of chick flick teal. And we are going to make what we're going to call a guitar Susan. So what is a guitar Susan? Well, it's kind of like a lazy Susan that you can turn things on, except it will hold a guitar. So I can film the stuff that you are going to covet, and it's kind of like your grandma's lazy Susan, but without the spices. So, without further ado, I'm going to get out, and we're going to do Chick Flick Teal all over this thing, and... I know, you're all ready to give me a, a high five, brother. Yeah, give me a high five. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, okay, that's enough. You can quit high-fiving me and whatever else that is you're doing there in celebration of my brilliance. But before we go outside and get plum ignorant with the chick flick teal, I'm going to want to point out a couple things on this project because... This is kind of complex, kind of a riddle, not like how some people end up on school boards, nothing as complex as that, but certainly complex. Let's have a look. We've got this round piece of wood. Okay, I already told you that. We've got a square piece of wood. Showed you that. And we've got this swivel. Now, the space here is this much. Some people, metric hater, don't like me to tell you how much, but it's this much. So if I put this on here and then put this on here and plan on using screws, how am I going to get to everything? So the first thing you want to do is this is, it spins like this, you see. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the theory of opposable thumb. That's what makes us able to do brilliant stuff like this. So, what we do is we take some measuring device, could be a cubit, which is from here to here. Help me out, wake up, Chick Flick Teal Pointer. Here to here. That's a cubit. I think that's a little much. But anyway, we take some type of conventional measuring device that other people would recognize. And when you're measuring something round, you just go across, it's supposed to be 18 inches, it is. So 18 inches, half of 18 inches is nine inches, even in Oklahoma. So you measure a few spots here and you get an array, an array of dots here. It kind of gives you the center you lay said device on it, then you take usually a square like this and measure everything from the edges. And notice I have put marks there. 
I am going to drill this out because I'm going to have to get my fingers in here to put those on when this square base is covering everything. You see the challenge here. Like I said, this is complex. So we're going to do the same thing here. This one's a little bit easier because it's square. You don't have to deal with circumferences and radiuses and all that. But five and a half inches, five and a half inches, lay this out like so, opposite of the other one. And we can put screws in this one right away. But we got a lot of painting to do. So I'm going to go ahead and drill pilot holes. And on this one, I'm going to drill all the way through because I'm going to countersink these so they end up flush with the top so I can put the things that make guitars stand up. You're going to be completely and utterly dismayed. So this is 11. Um, I said it was a foot. Some people lie about size. No comment. So that's five and a half there. And five and a half there. So where those points intersect is the middle. So I can take a straight edge like my little ruler here that's always ready right next to the love pencil. And what do you know? There's the middle. All right. The love pencil is going to nestle right back in the wink can ready to be of service at any time. And we're going to take this little square and we're going to make sure that everything is equidistant, which means the same thing as equidistant from the edge. And, oh, there it is, ready to go again. I am going to mark off these slots now. Bingo. Okay, now I'm going to take a couple pieces of cigar box guitar neck cutoffs and prop this up like so. And I'm going to use a pilot or a bit to drill a pilot hole on these four as well as on the round part. And on the round part, I am going to countersink the top side so the bolts go in and sit flush. You're not going to want to hear this. Protect yourself at all times. Yeah, high five. So now we're going to go outside and we're going to do the proprietary patent pending trademark applied for Chick Flick Teal. Chalk paint. Antiquing glaze. Finish and then mess it up with 60 grit. Boy, aren't I coarse. Works great for manicures. Okay, welcome to my partially hermetically sealed paint booth. Uh, in reality, there was quite a bit of analysis that went into this because there's just got to be the right amount of windborne dust and particulate to make this treatment look realistic and effective. I don't want the guitar Susan to look like worms first day. So, 
without further ado, Okay, there we go. Since this is going to look messed up and aged, I don't need your comments about my age. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it not to be sticky to the touch, oops, before you go on to the next step. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna flip these over and do the other side. And you're saying, why would you do the other side? No one's ever gonna see it. Hey. You know what, if I am going to charge somebody $4 for something like this, it's gonna be done right. I got way better stuff to go to hell for than not painting the underside because I'm shiftless. There's a lesson in this and it's Sunday, so there's your sermon. You're welcome. Okay, next step is we are going to loosely coat with chalk paint following the grain. Notice the technique. We're going to sand most of this off so it doesn't have to be perfect. In my world that's a rarity, in yours not so much. All right, there we go. Yeah, I know some of you out there are saying, well that looks pretty sloppy. Well, you know what, Shell Answer Man? You should get your own channel, but this, I meant to do that. Okay, the next step is we are going to use some antiquing glaze. We're gonna go right over the chalk paint like this. Yeah, I'm using the same brush. It's not like this is gonna be perfect. Now, you wanna remember, that this is a glaze. And so, once you get it on, what you are gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna take a piece of paper towel and wipe it off quickly. Quickly, ladies, quickly. Okay, once this is dry, you wanna take some 60 grit sandpaper and rough it up especially where it looks like it's been touched or where there would have been some wear on this thing. You certainly do not want this looking like an Easter lily or a poinsettia. You're not one of those people that shows up to church two times a year with your brand new came apart store-bought outfit on and then we don't see you the rest of the year, right? Okay, rough it up good. I don't want to reveal my technique. I don't need Martha Stewart and people like that stealing my work. Hey, turn that camera off. Okay, there we go. The finishing is done. Notice that there is wear along the edges where a million people have used this before. And now we're going to coat it with clear. Can you see it? Of course you can't. It's clear, right? So, you wanna remember that you cannot use this for Thanksgiving turkey. Don't even ask me, because this is guitar grade sterilized. I can't be having it messed up with food and other dirty objects. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna just let it dry. And while it's doing that, we're gonna make a trip to the hardware store, and that's the vital part of any project. Okay, guys, here we are back in the shed. Um, it's puzzle time now, and I spent some time at the hardware store measuring things because these two fit together, but you only have this much room to work with, and it's going to be inside of there and they're both overlapping enough where it's hard to get something into so the mystery is this we will put the base on the swivel first and you want to watch out for things like the screws I'm going to use screws here because they're hidden 
um, just barely fit over the edge of the flange here so we're gonna put washers on there let me drive those in now you'll notice that I didn't tighten these up until I get them all where I need them to be and then I can finally tighten them up There we go. I want to turn it like this so they're not over each other. That'll give me a little bit more room to work. And now I'm going to use my chick flick teal screws or bolts that accept a countersunk hole to attach the spinning part. Okay, let me show you a little trick here. Old men are smart. That's why I'm old. Use an awl, which is different than an owl, an awl, and find the slots in two of the holes and then put the rest in. I'm going to use nylon, nylon insert knots and washers on the underside so these things never loosen up. Bingo. Now I just have to fish around and put a washer and a nylon insert knot on each of those. Back them up with this little crescent wrench and I am good to go. All right, there we go. And it spins around. Now you're asking yourself, how am I going to put a guitar on here? Well, let me show you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is the Love Pencil. And then we're going to need said guitar. It's representative of the average guitar we're going to put on here. Yeah, it's going to stand up like that. We know that these represent a straight line, the screws. So we're going to come out about that far like so and we're going to do the same thing in the back wherever we want things to be and then we are going to drill a couple of what will appear to be broom handle cutoffs here 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 and here the back ones will be taller than the front ones. Okay, let's catch up. Hey, Chick Flick, Flick Teal Pointer, wake up. Got this piece of dowel, 16 inches to there, 16 inches to there, 8 to there, and 8 to there. So now we're going to take our Forstner bit that corresponds with this, and we are going to go behind each hole with this little slide rule thing. And I've got this one set in here. And so the edge of the hole lines up with that. Same thing here. Put the point of the Forstner bit. Flip this around. There we go. And there we go. Now we just drill these down. We don't want to punch all the way through. But we just want them snug enough to hold our dowel like this. All right, get the spices off of the guitar, Susan, but a little bit of aging to do on the uprights. You know, it's everything I thought it would be and less. Um, here, let's take this beautiful specimen here and show you what's going on 
Oh yeah, ooh ah, right? What did anyone do before this thing came along? You know what? I will stack this Lazy Susan up against any Lazy Susan. In fact, I'm relatively sure it's going to win the Mrs. Olsen Award. That's right. So, hey, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and we're going to see a really cool guitar come into play. But whether you like me or not, I certainly deserve a high five for this one. Hit it, bro. Yeah, high five right here. Go ahead. It's all right. Everybody else is doing it except you.